The one that differentiates China from the other states is that, that it's increasing in, uh, in improving an economy in military. It has increased its economic power, its economic strength in last 30 to 40 years. All the biggest markets in the world, China is exporting the most. China is mostly looking for self-reliance. China aspires to be one of the most innovative states in the world. China is interested in making economic partnerships. US makes less economic partnerships and more security partnerships. Hello everyone, my name is Sahir Rashmeen and today I am joined by my colleague Walid Sami. We will be discussing about the global rise of China and how that has come into being. So uh, Walid, first, uh, what do you think? Uh, let's uh, let When we're talking about China, its global uh, rise uh, uh, in economy and other sectors as well. So how would you see that? From where can you start if you're trying to you know talk about this? I think that one of the most remarkable thing about China is that it has increased its economic power, its economic strength in last 30 to 40 years. And it has come to the you know, top one of the top two economies in power purchasing parity is the top first economy in other GDP. It is uh, on the second only after the US. So I think no other state has, uh, you know, accomplished this feat in like in such low time in 30 to uh, 40 years and like US and other powers, they took centuries to achieve this feat. So China in this way is very remarkable. And secondly, if we look at the perspective of from uh, power purchasing parity GDP, it means that that how much state has a power to buy certain things and how much its market is strong enough to buy goods and services. In that, China is on the top of the list. And since Xi Jinping has taken control of China since 2013, it has been uh, on the top of the list and other economies which are uh, high in GDP, let's say, according to IMF, the three the states which have above 3% power purchasing parity are India, uh, US, Germany, Japan, and till 2022, I believe it's Russia as well. So these are the modern states with highest GDP, but only they are behind China. And in all of these states, China is the biggest importing partner. So okay. all the biggest economies in the world, all the biggest markets in the world, China is exporting the most. Okay. So I think this is one of the most brilliant feet of China's economic rise. Okay, uh, so uh, when we're talking about their uh, GDP and uh, you know how they are trying to compete uh, with the global and the regional powers, so uh, how how do you think they are? What what factors are they looking for in terms of? Uh, increasing their GDP, what sectors are they mostly f focusing on? Uh, recently, there, if you look at the uh, policies of Xi Jinping, particularly in the you know in the, this decade of the 21st century, China has mostly looking for self-reliance or okay. self-sufficiency. Okay. And in more words, if I say in Mandarin properly, it's Zili Zhenshang, something like that. Okay. Which means self-reliance and from Mandarin connotation it also means revival, which the modern Basically, Chinese Basically uh, enhancing their yes, own industry. national rejuvenation. Okay. Yes. So in self-reliance, they are particularly focusing on their economy. They want to self-sufficient their economy. They want to be self-sufficient in their food production. They want to be self-sufficient in technology. They, China aspire to be one of the most innovative states in the world. Okay. And they they are also very much um, interested in you know self-sufficiency in energy sector and for that china is uh, particularly focusing on renewable energy sectors that's why i think the uh, goal of chinese in this era is particularly under the xi jinping and one thing that uh, intertwined with the global politics is one many people say about the malacca dilemma okay because much of the chinese fossil fuel trade is from that straight from the Strait of malacca so what china is most fearful of in the global space that if there is any uh, confrontation with us or any other uh, it's uh, allied state so the problem would be that that trade would be disturbed so if that happened, then China's economic engine will slow down and it will soon start to decline. So China want to be self-sufficient in energy. That's why they are more improving toward the renewable energy sector. And also th they have started the project of BRI and CPEC where they have started connectivity in the Western part of China. So they are not that uh, cheap alternatives. They okay. are a bit expensive than the traditional method of trade, but still it will become become a good alternative for China. Uh, that's really nice, Walid. I would really, uh, I'm really interested to know uh, specifically about their um, strategic alliances mm -hmm. as well. Let's say that um, alliances that have actually helped them to uh, have a grasp 
on their uh, regional and global partners mm-hmm. as well because obviously if they are focusing on internal uh, you know the dom- the domestic market they are trying to enhance uh, their or- originality they are trying to focus more on uh, things that are made and manufactured by china so obviously they do have uh, economic and strategic alliances that are helping them reach to those specific markets as well so mm-hmm. if you can tell me about that as yeah, well yeah sure uh, when we particularly talk about the word alliance which is about military terms it means that have you have a uh, like defense alliance with an united state for or common security alliance like in the case of nato if you look at the chinese they are not that much interested in making def- defense alliances they have only one defense alliance which is with north korea okay and that has specific laws that both states will defend each other only if another states invade them like in the case if north korea starts invasion on south korea then okay. china is not bind to come to help so putin not- is not the only friend of uh, north korea actually china was also <laughs> they there have a, they have only china has only one treaty defense okay. treaty that is only with the north koreans otherwise china is not much interested in making defense treaties okay. whereas china is interested in making economic partnerships and in the case of us is the opposite us makes less economic partnerships and more security partnerships whereas in china's case they make less security partnerships and more economic partnerships okay. yes so when it comes to economic partnership the one of most you can say flagship project is BRI Belt and Road Initiative mm. and for that China is like partner to 155 states approximately okay. so China is like uh, like building and building inf- we call we also call it global infrastructure initiatives China is like you know helping other states to build infrastructure so that they can have more trade and connectivity like okay. it's like reviving the old silk road now they also have the maritime silk road so China is just want to improve the infrastructure of the world improve connectivity so that all the states can trade more okay that's really interesting uh, uh, what about uh, their interest with uh, you know one of their regional adversaries uh, india how mm-hmm. are they uh, you know taking care or, or c- catering to the trade economic uh, initiatives or basically any partnerships with mm-hmm. uh, india yes uh, i can say there's there's a relationship of love and hate yeah <laughs> hate in terms of military and love in terms of economy uh, since the galwan crisis and china has and, and india have a, a lot of border issues with them okay but i think that china look these issues as high political areas and there are certain low political areas like economy and other stuff so china is try to separate these two sectors and okay. they, they believe that okay we we have these kind of issues we have strategic issues but we can still work on economy so because uh, exactly because ladakh has been one of yes. you know the core uh, conflict zone yes. they still are uh, having a very high trade with india in, with so uh, what in your like in your view let's put aside whatever is there in uh, factually but like just in your view why do you think are they following this uh, pattern of uh, regional uh, relation with india what what do they see in india in the future if they are like you know trying to maintain a cordial economic ties with them uh, i think it's not particularly about the india it's about the chinese thinking okay. like if you look at the case study of uh, us okay. we have a lot of issues with us but they are still the largest trading partners definitely and, and the, yeah. in case of taiwan you can see the example of taiwan like china doesn't consider it a country it's a part of itself and there's a lot of uh, in the recent past 2 3 years there are a lot of issues between china and taiwan but still china continue to trade with taiwan okay so i think it's a part of chinese thinking like they just want to trade instead of if, if they know if they have a lot of political issues with another state but they still want to put them aside and trade so i think they believe that trade is a very good confidence building way here a good cbm and maybe like an interdependence way of ensuring that there can be less uh, uh, you know uh, factors that would go towards a conflict you know yes. making sure that mm-hmm. every country is economically dependent on each other to you know give yes. less way to the yes. uh, to In- any side interdependence will automatically conflict. increase the cost of war so when the cost of war will be increased so states will be less inclined toward the war and more toward the economic benefits of interdependence okay yes. so um just like uh, uh china's uh, very huge and historic uh, investments in uh, pakistan uh what do you think uh, in in terms of china's uh, reach towards the middle east and towards uh, the central asia uh, how is china growing uh, in middle east in middle east instead of you know the long hegemon there uh, usa mm-hmm. how are how is basically us uh, replacing uh, uh, china replacing usa mm-hmm. 
uh, towards the Middle East in terms of economy. One thing that China is good in it is that whenever US leaves some space in the international arena, China is automatically filling it up. Okay. It's very speedily. And we can particularly see the example of uh, relationship normalization of Iran and Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. Yes. And that comes under the China's global security initiative. So okay. it has other initiatives other than BRI, like global security, global civilization initiative, global development initiative. So China, through these initiatives, always fill up the space. And these initiatives are well inclined with the UN Charter. Okay. So that's China. China is always picking up the, like if there is an economic space, a political space, or any uh, soft power space in any region of the world, not particularly in Gaza, China will can, uh, come and try to take that space. There's another case study, very important case study, which is in uh, Africa. Like since of Africa is a, like uh, after World War II, not many states have invested in those regions, but yes. China is in increasingly investing in uh, uh, Africa. And one of the good reasons is that that Africa is home to 30% of world useful minerals that are known to the mankind still. Okay. Yet. And those minerals are very important in creating aircrafts, batteries, um, EVs, and other all sorts of modern innovative technologies. Okay. And China is the biggest uh, partner of Africa right now, and it is the biggest country which is uh, mining and refining those minerals. And all other states are behind it. So I think when China is improving political ties with other states so they also find uh, these kind of spaces and they try to you know exploit those uh, minerals for the benefit of the home country and also China another case study would be of Afghanistan Afghanistan is also home to trillion of dollars of uh, rare earth metals which are also important in and USA left areas. a very huge space US so there, yeah, yeah. has left a very huge space and now China wants to cover that space as well so I think it's all about that whenever US leaves a space somewhere China comes and try to fill up that space. That's interesting. So uh, I was reading a little bit about their uh, defense industry. I see that they are uh, enhancing that with in terms of uh, investing in a lot of uh, technology, technological advancements, basically. They have been investing a lot in uh, the AI. They have been investing a lot in the cyber security and cyber mm -hmm. warfare as well. Um, do you think that they are at a place right now where they can uh, actually become, you know, very much uh, of a competition to USA in terms of their uh, AI advancements and their technological advancements because of, uh, let's you know let's let's be mm -hmm. real that China is a hub for technology yes. and we can never deny that fact how mm. they have enhanced themselves in the last couple of years and have uh, achieved an edge over mm. the defense uh, over the defense industry the global one specifically through a lot of military exercises that they have conducted with uh, mm. regional and global uh, partners so you think there is there will come a time or are we near that time where they can compete with you know their regional and global adversaries in terms of uh, their ai mm. uh, grasp on ai and grasp on technology uh, well when it comes to modern military technology I don't think there is any rival to US. Okay. US is one of as one of the most sophisticated military technology in the world and I think it has three times more budget than the China. And I think the whole NATO combined US com uh, invest more than any other state. So I think in terms of military China has a long way to go. Okay. One particular sector we can say in case of maritime or in case of navy uh, the PLA navy the people's liberation army navy it has it is a, one of the biggest fleet in the world, the biggest fleet in the world in terms of Navy. But still the quality of those uh, ships, those uh, uh, war ships, they are not comparable to the US military, US Navy. Okay. So I think China still has a lot of, uh, you know, space to cover okay. in this particular sector. Other than that, you was talking about AI and other technologies. As I said earlier, China do wants to become one of the most innovative states. So China is working on that, but, but it still has a lot of, uh, you know, the ground to cover. Okay, I uh, have a slightly different uh, uh, understanding, but may let, like maybe I can just add on to what you just said. Mm -hmm. uh, China does have a very robust state funding, uh, you know, support to their, uh, let's say, the defense industry and the military, uh, uh, you know, capabilities in uh, for them. I feel that they are now investing a lot to become global, uh, have a global edge 
in military and uh, uh, you know defense enhancements like i was just uh, reading upon it and they have increased their defense budget to 250 mm-hmm. billion dollars uh, since last year it's a substantial increase since the past many years and their main uh, agenda is not just this you know to have state security national security but to also have a more bigger grasp on the defense sector why so that they are less dependent on uh, anybody else in the region mm-hmm. for uh, that matter and uh, china has developed an advanced uh, defense uh, missile system the df41 intercontinental ballistic missile so that does have a reach you know all the way to the us so that's like a big that's like a very big uh, edge for them in the defense uh, industry as well and like just earlier we were speaking about the ai technology so just because of these uh, investments in the defense uh, industry they have been able to achieve a lot of uh, prowess in uh, artificial intelligence and that is what they are be mostly focusing on in terms of converting all their military capabilities more towards the you know utilizing the vast uh, uh, you know uh, benefits of uh, artificial intelligence in their uh, military and uh, you know the major defense companies of china they have increased their sales uh, since 2021 22 like there's been 11% increase in one of their core defense uh, company and you know a 9% increase in their aviation Uh, mm-hmm. industry as well so they are reaching out to bigger markets they are able to uh, you know increase their defense exports you know more than the imports as well i feel that does speak for itself that they are going on that path and they are achieving new heights and giving you know possibly a tough uh, possibly a tough competition to most of the global uh, powers that do have a you know more a stable defense and military uh, uh, sector in their country so uh, that that's basically my view on china's uh, defense uh, capabilities i think i want to add on another point to it it's like that china is now like becoming a huge market a huge exporter and uh, you know like the one that differentiates china from the other states is that that it's including in, uh, in improving an economy in military and other aspects much of the history of last 200 years if we have seen that any state which has started to improve in any of the sectors started to westernize westernized by mean is by developing liberal thoughts and liberal world order we can see the example of german reunification when there was an east germany and the west germany and when they were reunited then the whole east germany was westernized i think in the case of china that didn't happen i think us was expecting it okay. specifically and but that didn't happen like they were uh, they were in good terms even before um, you know 2008 financial crisis and after that when china started to flexing its economic muscles then us started to you know see china as a threat so i think one thing is that us is seeing or we are seeing that this is a different anomaly is that china is a, develop, a developing state but now it is becoming a global power like we have always seen developed states who are taking the charge of global arena for the last 200 and 250 years but china is like a different challenge for that so i think that's one of the differences that will make between china and other powers that is a developing power is not westernized it has its own set of policies own philosophy like i was reading a, a couple of days ago about the philosophy of dianxia all under heaven it's a concept of confucius improvement in it is like that it wants to improve itself and it's also starts to you know wants to improve other countries or its partners and that will ultimately lead toward you know the xi jinping slogan of community of common destiny for mankind okay so i think okay. that's something that china is want to achieve that it wants to grow and it wants to you know elevate the other uh states which are partners to it and if we see the example of pri there are 155 states approximately so i think china wants to elevate the you know 155 states with it yeah exactly like uh, talking about the pri uh, they are enhancing their reach towards africa asian or you know yes. countries uh, so they are uh, trying to have a bigger uh, share the bigger uh, you know share mm. in the pie by reaching out to these countries and also their ex- export industry like they are uh, heavily exporting defense and military towards mm-hmm. uh, you know pakistan uh, and uh, bangladesh and also i think they have been and algeria as well and they have mm-hmm. been uh, exporting 
uh, unmanned aerial vehicles to uh, mm -hmm. countries like Egypt and Saudi, Saudi Arabia. So that does tell us that their technological advancement is such that so many countries are mm -hmm. actually relying on them and favoring them for the defense and you know uh, military yes. equipment. And that is a that's a that's a that's a big step. That that's a, like a big way that China has come forward, yes. and I would literally give uh, credit to the government and you know the Chinese government and how uh, they have been uh, supporting these initiatives of their uh, state, you know, by through state funding and specifically focusing on making China such a mighty uh, global power that it uh, try it it has uh, you know an edge uh, a self dependence on almost every field in every field. So because of these enhancements, they are no longer going to be extremely, in, uh, you know, dependent upon, uh, you know, uh, econ you know, for boosting their economy. They have mm -hmm. exports for technology. They have their own in, uh, you know, their own uh, nationally invested and uh, researched uh, AI and cyber uh, warfare technology and then trade. We can never, you know, put China behind in the countries that are, you know, booming in the mm -hmm. trade sector. So I, f I feel China is going to be a very, going to have a very, very important place in the global arena in terms of economy and more specifically, more specifically in the arena of defense and military mm -hmm. capability. So um, I, f I, I feel that they have come a long way. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have come a long way, but I think there is a slight challenge yeah. for China. Like particularly in all the BRI states and all the states which is it, uh, you know, doing its helping other states, it's giving aid to them or loans to them, credit to them. So all of most of the, these states are low or middle income states which are in financial distress. And so they have, you know, having some troubles in repaying that debt, which now the West and uh, most mm -hmm. of the Indian scholars also say debt threat diplomacy. So I think that's a great also challenge for China and we have to see that how China will work on it for its you know depth risk and other things so I think that's the, one of the biggest challenge that the rising China is going to face yeah so thank you so much really that was a really insightful mm -hmm. discussion and I uh, feel that you know we would be uh, in the future there is going to be a very very big boom when it comes to uh, China's capabilities mm -hmm. in all the fields uh, uh, you know of the global arena and they will be able to overcome these challenges with time i do feel they have the capability and they have the capacity to do that and because of their alliances and because of their uh, strategic partnerships they are ensuring that you know in the next you know decade or so they reach that level mm. so thank you so much thank you time it was thank a lovely you. discussion